This is the CC Jensen D40 Desorber. The Desorber series of products are used for removing water out of many types of oils. The Desorber products operate on the ability of cold air to draw in moisture as it heats up. Hot oil in the Desorber chamber is met with cold air bubbles that enter from the bottom. As the bubbles rise through the oil, they heat up and expand, pulling in moisture from the surrounding oil. The hot, moist air is then cooled, either with air, water, or a refrigeration circuit, depending on the model. The cooling process condenses the water, then the air enters the cyclone, where the water drops out of the air, allowing the dry air to then be recirculated back through the process. The water is drained off. The oil system has a supply pump, which runs continuously at fixed speed, and a discharge pump, which switches between high speed and low speed, to maintain the correct oil level in the chamber. The lower level switch is used to vary the discharge pump between low and high speed, whereas the upper level switch trips an alarm as a safety feature. Today I'm going to walk you through the main system components and also walk you through the flow path as it travels through the unit. Starting up here we have our main control panel. This is where the user interface is, where you'll operate the unit. At the back here are the electric preheaters, there's two in series. This is the oil chamber that the oil is pumped in and out of. Down below, you can see the suction pump and the discharge pump. These are the level sensors that are detecting level in the chamber. On the back side, we have an additional control box which houses the frequency drive for the discharge pump. We have our suction piping and our discharge piping. This is the uh, water to air heat exchanger. This helps to cool the air as it passes through the circuit. Down here we have the cross-flow heat exchanger. This is oil to oil and it passes the inlet oil past the outlet oil and this is a way to enhance the efficiency of the heating system and also to not change your oil system temperature by as much. Back here we have our air blower. This is charging the air through the circuit and then down here is the cyclone. This is where the moist air will collect and the water will drop out and exit out of this discharge tube. Now I'll show you how the oil flows through the system. We start with the suction port at the bottom. The oil flows in through a shutoff valve. You can use it to isolate the desorber from the main system. After the ball valve, it comes into your suction pump. The suction pump is equipped with a suction gauge to measure the restriction on the inlet side of the pump in case you're using a hose that's too small or you have any blockage. And then on the discharge side, we have a pressure gauge that will measure the pressure as it goes through the system. Here we have a pressure safety valve, which is a, a relief that's in place to protect against any overpressure condition that may occur, such as if your exit valve is closed. Up here we have a pre-filter or a pre-system sample point. You can use this to take a sample from your system, and this is, again, before the desorber process, so this would be generally your worst case scenario oil sample. It makes it a great consistent place to take a sample. After the suction pump, the oil travels into the cross-flow heat exchanger. So it comes through one side of the heat exchanger, comes back out through here and into the first of the two preheaters. The oil flows in through the bottom of the preheater tube. The heating element is inside, then the oil flows out the top into the second preheater and again out the top port located at the top of the heater housing. From the heater, the oil flows into the main desorber chamber. The desorber chamber will always have a level of oil in it, and that level is maintained by the discharge pump. The suction pump will run continuously supplying oil to the circuit, whereas the discharge pump goes between a high and a low speed in order to keep the level between the operating range. The oil comes out of the chamber through the discharge pump, back through the other side of the cross-flow heat exchanger, through another isolation ball valve, and through the outlet port which goes back to your oil system. So the air blower is located back here, pumps the air into the center of the desorber chamber. At the bottom of the chamber is a diffuser which allows the air to bubble up through the oil. That moist air, as the air picks the moisture out of the oil, will come up to the top here. The moist air will travel into the water to air heat exchanger where it's cooled. That moist cool air now travels into the cyclone 
where it's able to drop out to the bottom and be discharged out of the discharge tube. The air then comes out the top of the cyclone and goes back into the blower where it's recirculated through the system. It's important to know that the air circuit is a closed loop and that matters because we don't want to be oxygenating the oil as the air passes through it. So that air is reused in the circuit rather than introducing fresh air and new oxygen. So this is the water-cooled version of the D40, which means we'll have a water source cooling the air as part of the, the circuit. So the water will come into this thermostatically controlled valve, travel through the heat exchanger, and then out of this side to your water treatment or your drain. Now I'll show you through the control panel. On the front, we have our user interface with the run and stop buttons. We also have our emergency stop that you can use in the event you want to shut down everything. Inside the panel, we have our PLC, which is controlling the inputs and the outputs. We have a phase sensing circuit. We have our power supply and transformer. Down here, we have our motor thermistor sensor controls. We have a bank of fuses for our branch circuit protection, main contactor. Down here, we have our terminal blocks and some relays the additional contactors, and our main disconnect switch. On the inside of the door, we also have a fan, which helps to control the temperature inside the panel. Inside the back control panel, we have our variable frequency drive. This is controlled automatically, so there is no adjustments or monitoring necessary. On the top of each heater is a junction box. Inside the junction box, you'll find an overheat protection so right in the corner here is, if you unscrew this cap, if there's ever uh, an overheat condition that trips the thermostat, there's a reset under this cap. You may need a small screwdriver or a pen in order to push that and reset the thermostat. One additional safety feature on the D40 desorber is this leak detection system. If there's ever a leak that collects in the pan, it will fill this well and trip the float switch, which will stop the unit. In case you do have a spill, you can take this plug out and drain it through the lowest point in the pan. In order to power the system on, turn the main disconnect on the side. You'll see the screen light up, and then you've got to wait for about a minute in order for the software to load. Once the bar finishes loading, it will come up with one more screen with an hourglass, that means you're almost there. Now you can see when it powered up, we've got a fault that the screen lit up red, so we can go to our alarm screen to see what the alarm is. Here it shows us that we have a phase sequence fault and that the emergency stop is active. I'll go ahead and rectify the fault and then I'll power it on again. In order to clear the fault, press the acknowledge button You'll see the screen will turn back to white, press alarm again, and you'll go back to the main dashboard. When the system is ready to operate, you'll see this main screen. At the left, you can use the run and stop buttons to start or stop the desorbing process. The desorber has an auto drain function. This is in order to drain the chamber if there's ever a stop or a fault. You can turn that from auto, where it will do it on its own, or if you don't want the system to drain automatically in the event of a shutdown, you can put it to manual mode. From there, it will let you manually start or stop a drain cycle. On larger systems, we would recommend running it in the auto mode, as it does require the chamber to be empty every time you start the process from scratch. For a smaller system that you're worried about overfilling if you ever have to drain the desorber, we'll re recommend you put that to manual and then you can stand by as you operate the drain cycle. So to start the desorber, press run. Right away, the suction pump will start, the blower will start, the heater will start once there's enough oil in the chamber. The system is totally automatic, so from here you don't need to do anything. There are some info pages built in that you can use to monitor here it shows your hours counter. You can also change the units if you prefer PSI or Fahrenheit. The default is 
bar and Celsius. The next page shows you the time settings of the various parameters. Again, this isn't anything you need to be paying attention to, but it can help with troubleshooting. And finally, there's a page monitoring the various temperatures in the circuit. Pressing again will take you back to the main dashboard. In the event of an alarm, you can press the alarm screen and it will show you any of the faults here. The screen also lights up red as you saw. You always need to acknowledge alarms in order to clear them and then press the alarm button again and you'll go back to the main screen. So that's an overview of the D40 Desorber. If you have any questions or like more information, please contact us by the link below.